Hi, the following video is a quick exam preparation in science, particularly in science with one, mainly talking about physics. This is one of the questions that condense the few of the underrated concepts and this is grade 10 to 11 topic where we're going to talk about mass and weight. So the question says a man has a mass of 75 kg on the moon, taking gravity to be 1.6 newtons per kg. Then define the term mass. What's important to understand is that mass is either the quantity of matter or the amount of matter, but this is always contained inside of an object. So when we talk about mass, we're talking about quantity of matter or the amount of matter contained inside of an object. And more especially, when we try to relate mass to weight, we can distinguish using the definition by trying to understand that mass is the amount of matter inside of an object, whereas when we talk about weight, this is a pull of gravity exerted on an object. Let's see how best we can use this question to our advantage because these are to mention, but some of the questions that can pop up in the first four questions in an exam paper for science, paper one. Let's begin. So here I say a man has a mass of 75 kg on the moon, taking gravity to be 1.6 newtons per kg. A define the term mass. So on A, we're going to say mass is the quantity, the quantity of matter contained in an object. Mass is the quantity of matter contained in an object. But also don't forget to collaborate the understanding with the definition for weight, where we're trying to say weight is the pull of gravity exerted on an object. Moving on to B, calculate the weight of the man on the moon. The first important thing, which is highly recommendable in physics, is coming up with the correct formula. Thereafter, we're going to come up with our correct data to substitute in the formula. So we're going to go to B by saying weight equals to mass multiplied by gravity. Whenever you are facing a question to handle involving a formula or any calculation, make it your priority and target always on your right hand side to collect your data. So here we are going to come up with all possible values. Well, we are going to say the value for weight we don't have because this is our question. Then the value for mass is 75. Make sure you work with units. So I'm going to say 75 kg. Then gravity is 1.6 newtons per kg. Then this data that we have here will be substituted into the correct formula in order to yield the value for weight. So we're going to say weight equals to mass is 75 kg multiplied by gravity is 1.6 newtons per kg. Then at this stage, we're not going to say 75 multiplied by 1.6. As for me, I've already punched the value. So I'm going to say 75 multiplied by 1.6 is supposed to give us 120. We're going to cancel spectator units and we're going to remain with newtons. So our answer is 120 newtons. Then C sets one difference between mass and weight. When you're trying to involve a difference between two things that are said to be drawn a comparison to, we're supposed to use words such as while, we're also going to use words such as but. So in this case, when we talk about mass and weight, we can start with units. Mass is given in kilograms, whereas weight is given in newtons. When we talk about measurements in a laboratory, mass is measured using a beam, 
balance. Wow, weight is measured using a spring balance. When we talk about the values in terms of places, mass is constant in every place. Wow, weight varies from place to place. When we talk about them being physical quantities, mass only has size but no direction. So we can say mass is a scalar quantity. Weight has both size and direction because of gravity. And as a result, we can be able to say weight is a vector quantity. So on Z, we are going to say mass is a scalar quantity. Wow. Weight is a vector quantity. Mass is a scalar quantity. Wow. Weight is a vector quantity. Or you could possibly take advantage of the view of the linked comparison I had to draw in the few seconds just before writing this answer. So, my main challenge of which I can be able to dare as in terms of having that or having what it takes in order to create self-dependence is quite all right, you may be able to underrate this concept. The truth is, this question will play an important role in trying to secure the proper grade you would probably want if this is to pop up in an exam. The least you could do, grab a paper, use the same concept, check some values and try to relate the same, if probably of a past paper, and see how best you are being able to create independence. If you are a GCE writing an exam in less than almost a week, as it stands, the best you could do is try by all means to relate the very things you can understand to use them according to your advantage. Most importantly, self-belief is the key. And always make it your priority to ensure that you no longer look at a timetable, but you look at possibilities and positivities in trying to see as in the way you are trying to move. Just after doing this very question and understanding, try to repose where I haven't understood and use this to your advantage for now, it's a good point.